for joining me. I hope you're well. This is a DIY upcycling channel where we take unwanted discarded items, breathe new life in them, and create one of a kind unique purses, clothing, and accessories. And today I want to make beautiful collage brooches. My plan is to make three and they are made with bits and bobs and fabrics and just a collage of wonderful things. You can call them assemblage brooches, mixed media collage brooches. They are a lot of fun and very versatile. You can pin them onto a felt hat or any sort of hat, pin them on a long beaded necklace, maybe some pearls for a statement neck piece, a headband, a belt, a fabric, maybe stash on a kind of boring dress to jazz it up. Of course, the classic jackets and coats, a scarf, the pin it onto a scarf and keep your scarf in place on a boring purse. So many fun ideas. Now, you may have scraps and bits and bobs around your house or your studio. I had to go searching for some things because I had some ideas in mind and colors and the treasure hunt was so fun. And I'm going to take a minute and give you some great ideas that you may not have ever even thought of to source these wonderful pieces we're going to use on the collages. Let's get going. Thrift stores in my area have, as I'm filming this, they still have Halloween costumes out and they are a lot of fun. I want some flowers on my brooches and I'm looking for pieces with some sheen or 100% silk, things like that. And these costumes were all on sale because it's towards the end of October and I picked up something like this. It has some black lace, you know, some trims, and then this, I don't know what it is, but it was in the costume section. I just love the color and the different textures. Now, sometimes they put these like gowns that aren't even costumes, so put them in the costumes. Now, I loved this because look, it has tulle and beautiful red lace trim. And this one, I love the color and it had some pretty detail I may or may not use. And if I don't use this stuff, I will stash it away for future projects. Now this little costume skirt, I liked it because it had all that fun tool. And these are parts, I will use some of it on these collages. Okay, and so, I found this pillow. I will use this back side. It's kind of a taffeta. I just love the sheen and it's a little bit iridescent. And this embroidered ribbon sort of detail I can use on another project. These pants, way too small for me, but they're 100% silk and you probably can't see, but it's sort of iridescent as well. Just beautiful. And Christmas stuff is everywhere and I'm going to show you some more things but this is a tree skirt also a pretty fabric with some sheen now I love these upholstered buttons I will probably use those on another project and it has a pretty border that I can upcycle and use on a different project holiday decorations have so much fun whimsical pieces to them now, these are not going to be necessarily holiday brooches, but these pieces, like here's a little sparkly with a bead on it. You know, you can put that on there and your brooch isn't going to scream Christmas, but I want to do rich jewel tones so that you can wear it as a beautiful accent at the holidays. Now, look at this. These are ornaments. There was a stand with 99 cent ornaments. So these were 99 cents. But look at all the pretty velvet flower details and beads on this little guy I can cut off and use. Look at one on a little wire, so pretty. Some details on this little ornament. Um, you know, I liked this may or may not use and of course these little fun 
sparkly pieces. Now, this angel, I, I see these a lot at the thrift stores. And see, it's all smashed and kind of beat up and a little dirty. And that probably never would have gotten bought. I feel like that probably went would have gone to the dump. It's just so beat up. But you take it apart. Look at all the pretty little beads and trims and this gorgeous ribbon and some tool. Yeah, this will definitely be a part of a brooch. Okay, and I will be using jewelry pieces on my brooches. Now, I know that jewelry can be difficult to source. Not every thrift store has them. I'm lucky that in my area, I have a couple thrift stores that sell jewelry, and sometimes you can find vintage. Now, I got all of these at, I just got back from a road trip to North Carolina. I stopped at one antique mall. Now, typically antique malls can be fairly high on jewelry, but I can almost always find at least one booth that is reasonable for prices. You know, eBay is another a uh, place where I've sourced vintage jewelry. You just have to really dig, though, sometimes to find um, good prices. Okay, let's start with the first brooch. Now, I have this stack of multicolor 6x6 six six felt pieces from Amazon. I'll put a link to that in my description if you're interested. And I'm going to choose purple. And I have this glass. It's two and a half inches across at the widest point. I am just going to trace around it twice. And now I'm just going to carefully cut those circles out. Now I have two identical circles and I'm going to set one aside and work on this one for now. I want to have sort of a purplish brooch and I dyed these materials. This is silk, this was white tulle, and this was lace. Now, I did this with dye more, and I have a couple tutorials that I'll put in my description. I have lots of videos on how to dye in the washer and on the stove top. These were on the stove top. So I have a silk scrap from a shirt. It's 100% silk, and I want to cut a strip at the bottom one and a half inches tall now this is about 20 inches long so i am just going to get that cut out okay so here's my strip i laid out an old towel and a rag that i actually got from the thrift store as well in a big bundle because I use them for projects like this. And I want to burn the edge so that it doesn't fray and it has a cool discoloration. So I lit a candle and I'm just going to run the edge along the candle. All the way down. Now if it looks like it's on fire, I will just kind of put it out like that, but the towel and the rag have another use as well. It will kind of clean it up for me. Okay, now that I have the edge all burned, I don't want a bunch of crumbly black mess, so I am just going to wipe away a lot of that charred area along the whole piece. Now I'm taking a thread and needle, purple thread. It's doubled and knotted, probably about a foot and a half long. And I am going to sort of baste this at the bottom. But first I need to just sort of double stitch this in the corner so that it doesn't come undone. And I'm working on the side that I didn't burn. And I am just going to make stitches all along the bottom about half inch apart and about half an inch long i'd say i'm about an eighth of an inch up from the bottom 
And now that I have that stitch all done, I'm just going to scr scrunch it up. How tight you do it depends on how long your piece is. I think that's good. It's not pulled completely tight. I want some flour to work with here. So that looks good to me. I'm just going to tie a double knot here in the corner so that that scrunchiness stays right where it needs to be. And then I'm going to clip this thread. So now I took another piece of that silk shirt. It's an inch and a quarter tall and 12 inches long. And I'm going to fold it in half, putting the raw edges together. And I'm just going to do a similar basting stitch like I did to the other silk piece. This time I'm going to make the stitches a little bit closer together. So I ended up cutting about three inches off of the end. So eight or nine inches long for this piece should be fine. Now I'm just tying off my knot after I scrunched it just like I did the other one. And I have a piece that looks like this. Now I'm keeping the thread attached because this one I'm going to do a little more sewing and so the thread is on this end that will be the bottom this will be a two-part flower so basically this is just sort of a base so I'm just winding it around on top of itself making each layer a little bit smaller than the last now I'm going to take my needle and thread that's still attached and I'm just going to make a few stitches to hold it together. Come in from the back, up through the top. Now this doesn't have to be as super secure as some of the other flower tutorials if you watch them that go on jackets and purses because this is going to be glued. I just basically want it secure enough that it's not going to come apart and lose its shape. Now I have two pieces of a pinkish satin ribbon. This is 12 inches long. This is eight and a half and it's almost one inch tall. Now I am just, I'm not going to fold this one over. I'm going to do both of these the same way and stitch along the bottom, scrunch it up, fold it on itself and sew it just like we did this little one to both of these. Okay, so that smaller ribbon, now that I have the rosette made, I still have the string attached. I'm going to just go ahead right now and sew it to the little silk piece. So first I just want to take this thread and needle, go through the center, and just center that little pink one best I can so that it has the purple silk edging around it. And now I'm just going to sew that together. I'm burning the ends of these ribbons just a little bit so they don't get messy and frayed. Now I'm going to make this final flower. Okay, so at this point, I'm sort of just gathering parts for my brooch. And now I want a sort of lacy, interesting backdrop in which to put all this on. And I have this kind of blush color shirt that I thrifted. And it has that cool applique on it. And I'm seam ripping a chunk of that off.
So now I'm just going back to my little purple circle and just kind of sizing this up to see what all I want for this brooch. Just cutting out a creative piece and I think I like that. Maybe I'll make more of a point right here. Yeah, I think that's cute. So now I'm just going to take this to my machine, lay it on my little purple circle, and I am just going to sew around that circle's edge with gold colored thread and a straight stitch and get this little applique sewn on. There's what that looks like. And here's some purple tulle that I dyed. It kind of rolled up on the edges and I kind of like that look. So I'm going to cut a piece, I don't know, maybe a foot long, a foot and a half off of here. Okay, now I'm just going to lay it on top of my applique. Oh, maybe about there, I doubled it up. And I will go to my machine and I will put a stitch just right there, a simple straight stitch just right across. I'm going to either leave this or cut it off. It doesn't really matter because it'll be hidden by flowers. So I'll get that sewn. Okay. I laid this on some blue fabric so you can see this tool that I cut. This was off an old wedding dress. I have two pieces that are eight by four and I am going to sew them along the sides here. What I'm going to do is just kind of pleat this like this, lay it pretty much on that center uh, tool that I sewed on and I will sew it here and I will sew it closer to the edge here so it doesn't stick up like this that it lays more flat and I will take the opposite one and do the same thing. Lay that about right there and just get that sewn on. And I won't take you to the machine I every single time. I'm just using a simple straight stitch. Okay, so there's my tool, and I will probably trim it some once I get the bulk of my collage done. Now I have this little piece of lace that I dyed for another project. I'm going to lay it there, and I'm going to go to my machine, and I'm just going to make a couple stitches over it so it stays in place. Now I have these little pale pink berries that I removed from the wreath from that angel and I am going to position them where I want them and hot glue them. Okay, I think that looks good. I have this whole thing on a piece of cardboard and a piece of parchment paper, wax paper would do too. I don't need it so much for the hot glue, but I will be using E6000 glue and I want I don't want it to stick to the cardboard and I want to be able to have something to move it around on. So I am just going to glue these berries down. Now I played with my first little flower a little bit and positioned it how I think I like it on here and I am just going to make a glue sort of ring to get this started lay it on there and I can add more glue once I get this in the basic position I want okay so now I want to pin oops these two flowers on and I'm going to let this little petal overlap it a little bit like that and stick a little glob of glue and I'm gluing this pink one right there 
Now I have these two pair of dangly rhinestone earrings. I want to sew them at an angle right here. But first, what I need to do is just clip off this back with my big wire cutters. Okay, so the first one I positioned about right there at an angle slightly underneath of that flower. And I am going to use... Um, not metallic silver, but I have gray because this is kind of a silvery rhinestone. I like to match the color of the jewelry that I'm sewing and not the color of the fabric. And I am going to just stitch anywhere I can find a spot. And I will probably stitch all the way down from the top to about here so that it sort of holds that angled position. And when I get that all sewn, I'll grab the other one and I'll come right on top of that and sew that one as well. Now I have my rhinestone sewn on and I have this pretty petite little piece of ecru vintage lace and I'm going to glue that right underneath of this petal right here. It'll help hide all those unattractive stems and I think I'll put a little dab of glue on the top so that the petal will adhere to it. Now I think I'll tuck another little piece of lace right about here. This might be hard to see, but what I want to do now is that tool kind of is squared off up here. I want to angle it more of a soft curve into that flower. And I think I'll make it a little bit shorter. And I'm going to do the same to the other side. Okay, so now I have three wispy little white feathers. I am going to tuck them in as a little cluster underneath this petal here and just put a little dab of glue to hold them. Okay, so there are the feathers. Now what I want to do is go to that little uh, pink ornament and cut off three of these little stems that have those pretty beads on it. Now I'm positioning them on the flower about here. And then I have the third one there and I'm going to glue them on. Okay, so now what I want to do is just with my E6000 glue, I want to glue some pearls in the center of this. And I have sort of small, medium, and large. And first I'm going to do the large, and then I'll do the little ones on top of that. Now, this will take overnight to dry. I'm just going to start. Put a little dab of glue, put a bead, and I'm just going to do that until I have, you know, a lot of this unattractive stitching and messy part all covered up. Now that I got the bulk of them in, I'm filling in the some of the gaps with smaller beads. And so I'm just taking my glue and putting it on a toothpick 
and then I'll put it on the bead and then lay it in. Okay, so now I have some Swarovski crystals and I'm just going to dump them out on this piece of fabric and I'm looking for the clear ones and I am gl going to glue those on to the netting on both sides and I'm going to use my E6000 glue, tweezers to pick them up and a toothpick to dab the glue on. So I'm just going to dump these out. I will put a link for an assorted, they're not super cheap, but they're brilliant and they're really sparkly and beautiful. I just love these. Okay, so I feel like there's too many pearls on there, but if I remove the edge, the outer pearls, there's going to be a glue stain. So what I think I'm going to do is go ahead and remove some of those outer pearls, and I think I'm going to cut a border of this pretty lace, maybe, and go around and hide that glue stain. So... Cross your fingers, let's see. So they're already starting to adhere. See, that would be really ugly if I could, if I just left them as, left this flower with that glue all over. I need to hide that somehow, but I was bothered by how many pearls were on here. Okay, let me work on this for a little bit and I'll come back. Okay, so instead of the lace, I think I'm going to do flower petals. Remember that Santa with those pretty flowers? Well, I'm cutting those off and I'm going to put a little dab of hot glue there and tuck that in right there. And I'm going to do that all the way around. Okay, I'm a lot happier with that. I added a little piece, a little cluster of these petals right here just to kind of tie that color in together. Now, if I had this to do all over again, I wouldn't do all these little beads. I would find a brooch with a pearl cluster or a cluster earring, something like that, because this was kind of hard. So, a tip for you. <laughs> okay, so now... This is all dry. It's time to put the back and the brooch clip on. And I have a package of these from Amazon. I'll put a link in my description. They're one and a half inches long. Okay, so all I'm doing here is I'm laying the brooch clip down on the felt and I want it towards the top so that the brooch doesn't get top heavy and flip forward when you're wearing it. And I am just going to mark right at the ends here so I know how wide it is because I need to make a cut. Now I'm going to make a tiny cut where I made those marks. And I opened up my clip, my pin, and I am going to just slide it through those cut marks. like that, but I want to put a little glue on that bar here. That was a lot of glue. That's a brand new hot glue gun and I'm not used to it yet. It comes out way faster than my other glue gun did, but that'll be hidden anyway, it doesn't matter. Now I'm going to turn my brooch over and I will hot glue it to the other felt piece. And that just helps to hide. Oh, I still have a little glue that's wet. That'll just help hide all that stitching. And now I'm going to go around with my glue gun 
and get that all glued on. I'll just do little parts at a time. As you know, glue guns cool fast, dry fast. And here it is on a pretty purple upcycled dress. I'll do a little recap at the end of all three brooches. For the next one, I'm using this sort of neutral colored felt and I'm tracing around the same glass, the two circles. For this one, I'm going to start with the flower. I'm using the orange silk pants. I cut out a strip two inches tall by 26 inches long. I'm going to do this pretty similar to the first flower I did on the first brooch. I'm going to burn the sides and the top. And I'm going to baste the bottom. Now I'm going to scrunch it, swirl it around on itself, and sew it together. Okay, on this one, I'm going to add some lace. I'll put a chunk there covering that round circle. Chunk here. And I think I'll take a piece like this and put it diagonal. And I'm going to pin that a little bit. And then I'll go to my machine and I'll sew around that circle, that felt circle, and get all this sewn on. Okay, so now I think I want to trim this a little bit shorter. Yeah, more like that. And now I have this piece of green lace. I'm going to lay about there. And I have some purple tulle again. I have two pieces. I'm going to lay one kind of scrunched up there at the top of that green. And then I'm going to lay the other one about right there. And now I am going to go to my machine and I am just going to do one stitch line right across the tool and the green. Okay, so now I have this little stem from that Santa ornament and I want it right about there, and I am going to hot glue that on. Okay, so I want my flower there, and I am going to sew this brooch onto it, but what I'm going to do is just put a little dab of glue just to hold that rose in place, and when I sew the brooch to it, that's what will adhere the flower and the brooch to the brooch. <laughs> so I will use gold colored thread when I sew this and I will probably sew it in maybe one, two, three, four different areas. I just need to find a gap in the brooch. Okay, so now all I want to do is just hot glue three little flowers on. I want one right about here. And I'm just going to do some little petals right about here. Then I have this vintage crochet little purple flower. And I'm going to put it there. Okay, I found this little piece of burgundy suede fringe among my stuff. And I think I'm going to hot glue that about right there. Okay, I have these two little sparkly earrings. I cut the hook off right here, and that's where I'll sew it on. I'll just sew it in one place, both of these. I still have to cut the hook off of this one, 
and I will be sewing them kind of tucked slightly under this flower and just have a pretty sparkly cluster right there. Okay, now I have these two pretty vintage earrings and I am just going to sew right at the bottom of that rhinestone with gray thread and I will put one here and I will put one here. Okay, there are the earrings. Now I'm just hot gluing three pretty little feathers to the top. Now I want to add some crystals, mainly on the lace and some on the tool. But before I do that, I'm going to finish off the back just like I did the first brooch and glue this pin on. Okay, so I'm putting colorful ones on the lace and then on the purple tool, I'm putting the clear crystal. Okay, here it is all finished. Gorgeous. Okay, now for the third one, I'm going to go a little faster because the concept's basically the same, just different materials. I'm starting with two kind of mustardy colored circles and I'm taking a piece of green lace. I'm going to lay it about there and go to my machine and stitch around it. Now I'm going to take this pretty piece of lace, make a flower out of it, just like all the other ones based around the bottom, swirl it around itself, sew it together. Okay, I'm going to set the flower aside for now. I have a piece of lace and a piece of green lace. I'm just going to combine them like this and then I'm going to set it pretty much in the center of the circle and go to my machine and make a stitch across there. Okay, now I'm going to take my flower and I'm going to put it about there. And I have this brooch, this cute little cameo that I will sew into the center. And this has tiny little holes on the side that I will be able to stick a small needle through and that will secure the flower and the brooch to the lace. But first I'm just going to put a little dab of glue so that it doesn't move around when I'm trying to sew. Now I have these two little chains with little pearls on them. I'm going to sew at the very top of each one, right underneath that flower, sort of in the center. Now I have this cute little cluster. I snip it off of that butterfly ornament and I'm going to kind of smush it in and sew it right there. Okay, so now I have this little cluster of feathers, I'm going to glue right there. Now I have these little beads on a chain and I'm going to go find the center and go a little off center and just choose one ring and I'm going to sew it right about in the middle of those feathers. Now I have a couple little petals that I am going to tuck right underneath the big lace flower. Okay, so now I'm going to sew this. It was an earring. I'm going to put that there. 
Here's another little earring. I'm going to sew that onto somewhere around here. And then I have this little doodad, kind of pretty. I'm going to put that there. I'd like to add some crystals, but first I want to put the back on like we did all the others. I'm just adding some clear ones to the lace so that the lace has a little sparkle. Mm. About there. Okay, here it is all done. Now I'm going to slow it down, bring it in a little closer so you can see more of the detail. And I thank you so, so much for watching.